you have huge, large, medium, and small. I feel like I'm describing the size of a penis. Hard points. No, they don't come with different girth. And the size of your ship will determine... <laughs> Oh seven Commanders, and welcome back to the Ultimate Beginner Series, your one-stop Coriolis shop to all things Elite Dangerous. Okay, so today we're going to cover that great subject of, what the fuck am I looking at? What is all this? And how does this all work? Uh -huh. And why has my ship shut down right as I'm about to go pew pew someone, otherwise known as modules? The subject that has seen many a new commander just up and quit the game faster than it takes a joke to come out about any tragic incident on social media. It could be the difference between hitting a decent jump range so you can keep up with your mates and being that slow kid left at the back of a 100 meter <clears throat> sprint. It could be the difference between being like a Star Destroyer and being that guy in the movies who just shouts, THEY'RE ALL OVER ME! I JUST CAN'T SHAKE THEM! Who then subsequently blows up seconds later. And it could be the difference between being that super sexy lady at the start of a night out on town and that drunken mess just lay there on the floor in a pool of her own sick and piss at the end of the night. Mmm, lovely. Now, I will say that I'm not going to go super duper Jupiter in depth with this one, as I have other more advanced videos coming in the future which will involve this subject. But trust me, there's more than enough information in here for you today, Commander. Let's first start with the letters attached to modules, as you will see these a lot. E equals dog shite. Get rid of it. D equals the lightest, which is good for increasing jump range. C is middle of the road. Not great, but not bad. B is the heaviest, which is good for combat, or if you know you're going to take a decent amount of damage when you're out and about. And A is the best of the best, but not the lightest. So, when you first open the outfitting menu, you will be presented with something that looks like this. The layout is changing in Odyssey, but as usual, all information I'm giving you today carries over well to Odyssey. At the top we have hard points, these are your weapons, and below that we have utility mounts. These are for things like kill warrant scanners, point defense turrets, etc, which will be explained later. Then we have your core internals, this is the blood and guts of your ship, it's what makes you go faster, jump further, but also it can be what makes you shut down at the first time you saw a naked lady in person if you get it wrong. Then optional internals, these are, well, optional, which include fuel scoops, shield generators, cargo racks, etc. Livery, or livery, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is where you change the appearance of your ship and where you spend that sweet, sweet money on microtransactions. Something I'm not covering in this video as it's self-explanatory. And lastly, we have stored modules. We will cover this at the end. At the very bottom of the screen, you will see your ship specs. These are important for the nitty gritty builds, where you want the most speed or boost speed mainly. Next to that, you have your power draw. This part here is really important. You have retracted and deployed. Note that above that to the right you will see maximum megawatts. And on the bars themselves you will see a cutoff line. That indicates whether you're within your maximum power limit or not. And if you're not, it will show red. So here's the part that you can get to some people. You must make sure your power draw does not exceed your maximum power available on the deployed bar. If you do exceed it, as soon as you deploy your weapons for action, your ship will shut down. Unless you were a good commander and set your priority groups that I mentioned in episode 1 of the Ultimate Beginner series, which you can find at the top right. Shameless plug alert! You can switch off things to keep you within your limits, but for an easier time, just make sure you have a good enough power plant installed for whatever activity you want to do with that ship. Below all of that, you will have your jump stats. Minimum, current and maximum. You will mostly pay attention to current, as that is the best indicator, as you will have fuel on board, and maybe cargo, so you will rarely ever hit your max. But having a high max does give you those sweet, sweet bragging rights. Next to that you will see your balance and rebuy cost. Man, they put that everywhere. Okay, let's get your weapon out for the lady, shall we? Each ship comes with hard points. Which hard points you get depends on which ship it is you're flying, and they can be located at very random areas on a ship sometimes. You have huge, large, medium, and small. I feel like I'm describing the size of a penis. Hard points. No, they don't come with different girth. And the size of your ship will determine... 
and the size of your ship will determine what you usually have though. That would be funny as hell to see a sidewinder with huge hard points on it. <laughs> In this area you put your weapon of choice. <laughs> I just can't do it. Okay, focus. I swear to god, a grown man laughing at a penis joke. Anyway, in this area, you put your weapon of choice, which will also include things like mining lasers. Now, I will not go into every detail of them in this video, but you do have three main types of weapon classes in the game. Thermal, or energy weapons, explosive weapons, like missiles, or kinetic, for example, multi-cannons. These do different things in combat, which I'll go into in more detail in the combat video. But basically, thermal weapons are for shields, kinetic weapons are for hull, and explosives are also for hull, but they have way less ammo capacity and can be shot down by point defense turrets. I will cover the mining ones in the mining video, which is coming soon. To the left, you also have your general information panel for the module you have selected. Now, which weapon type you use depends on your playstyle commander, but I would recommend gimbaled for everything when you first start. Yes, the DPS is lower, I know, but your time on target is also going to be terribly low when you first start combat. So you will actually do more damage overall with the gimbaled weapon. And if you want a really easy time, you can go turrets, which are click and forget. They will follow your target, etc. and do all the killing for you, but I find them boring as hell. Okay, utility mounts. This is where your additional utilities come into it, like scanners and shield boosters, etc. Chaff will deploy loads of little metal bits of confetti, and it is meant to confuse missiles into targeting that instead of targeting your ship. ECMS will cause your target or anything targeting you to lose the targeting ability on you. How many times I can say targeting in this one? Heat sinks are used to remove heat from your ship and are very useful to stop you overheating. Kill warrant scanners will tell you if that commander or NPC has been naughty and is wanted by any other system. You will want this for combat as it will get you more murder coins per kill. Manifest scanners will tell you if your target is carrying any juicy, juicy cargo you can go and steal. Great for all you space pirates out there. Point defense turrets will automatically target any missile or limpet that is flying within its area and blow it up. Really handy for a lot of ships to have these, Commander, but choose the right area. If you're going to be carrying expensive cargo, put one on the underside of your ship and that will protect your cargo hatch from hatchbreaker limpets. Pulse wave analyzers are for detecting deep core mining rocks. Shield boosters boost your shields. And finally, wake scanners scan the remnants of someone jumping into supercruise or out of a system. You'll need this for engineering materials. Okay, so let's get into the guts of the ship now, the core internals. These never change. Every ship has them, but they're in different sizes. At the top, you have your hull. More often than not, this will just be 1C lightweight alloys. You should never really need to change this, but it can be changed to hulls with different resistances, which are only really useful for high risk trade or combat. Power plant. This dictates how much power you have available to your ship, but put this in last. Thrusters dictate your speed when out of supercruise. Put this in second last. Frame shift drive determines how far your ship will jump. Just A-rate this every single time. If you cannot afford to A-rate this, then you probably want to choose C for this one. Life support. This determines the length of time you have to make it to a station to repair when your canopy gets blown in. Set this as D or Delta only. That will give you seven and a half minutes to get to a station. The only time that is not achievable is when you're in deep space. And if your canopy gets blown in deep space, you're done anyway. So you may as well just save your credits and save your weight and just derate it. Power distributor. This will determine how fast your boost recharges, how slow your weapons discharge or how fast they recharge, and how fast your shields will come back should they get taken out. There are times where you can derate this. Exploration ships come to mind. But mostly, you're just going to A-rate this. Sensors. No point, just derate and forget. And lastly, fuel tank. You will rarely ever change this. But if for some reason you know you can get away with a smaller tank of fuel to save some weight, this can be changed. Okay, so why did I tell you to put power plant in last? The reason you do this is because you want to make sure that everything is in your ship first, including utilities. Because what you want to do is make sure that you put the right size power plant in. There is no point being on 12 megawatts deployed and then putting in a 25 megawatt power plant. 
There's wasted room. There's wasted weight. There is wasted credits. You could easily put in a small old power plant and get away with that just fine. How you set this all up will really be determined by your use case scenario. And I'll be doing some videos on builds in the near future and how to min max this stuff. But this video will be long enough already without adding even more to it. Okay, optional internals. The amount of optional internal slots you have will be determined by the ship you're flying. They also come in various sizes. So let's cover the key modules now. AFMs, or AFMUs as you will hear them called, are for repairing your FSD when you're out and about using the Neutron Highway. They cannot repair your hull if you take hull damage. Cargo racks are for carrying cargo, and, so, and they come in various sizes. Collection limpets are little things you send out to fetch materials and mining ore. FSD boosters is a guardian technology and will increase your jump range, but you have to go and unlock these. FSD interdictors are for bounty hunting and pulling ships out of supercruise. Flight hangers are available for some ships and will install a small ship which NPC can fly or a friend or you if you want to. Flight assists are for your supercruise assist and docking computers. Supercruise assist will help you out at supercruise and pull you out at the correct distance from your base etc. Thus preventing the loop of shame which is where you fly by your station so fast and have no time to turn around. It will also help to fuel scoop for you if you struggle with that. Standard docking computer will land for you, but you have to take off yourself, and advanced does both. Hatchbreaker limpets are for piracy and will break open your target's cargo hatch and jettison their cargo for them. How kind. Hull reinforcements will increase the, hull, the health or integrity of your hull. Module reinforcement does the same, but for your modules, handy for combat. Passenger cabins are self-explanatory. Planetary vehicle hangers are where you install your SRV. Add the hangar and below that add your SRV in. You can add multiple hangars and multiple SRVs. You're not just limited to one. Don't bother with the heavier one. Just go for the more expensive one, which is lighter. There's about 3000 credits in it. It's not much. Prospecting limpets are from mining and will tell you what minerals an asteroid has within it. And it will also make that asteroid yield more minerals or more ore. So if you're mining, use them. Recon limpets are for hacking data terminals. Refineries are for refining mining ore. Repair limpets are for repairing external damage to your hull or to your ship. These do not repair your FSD. Shield cell banks, these will speed up the recharge of your shields, but they do cause excess heat, so be careful, Commander. While shield generators are just that, they are your shield. Surface scanners are for scanning the surface of planets, which is good for uncovering points of interest on the surface, as well as the makeup of the planet. And not forgetting getting your name attached to it if you're the first to do it. Okay, so day from the future here. I forgot to discuss fuel scoops, fuel tanks, and fuel transfer limpets. Fuel scoops are what you use to regain your fuel when you're at a star. The bigger the number and the better the letter means the more fuel you will scoop from the star per second. Fuel tanks are for increasing your tank range. A fuel transfer limpets are for helping your friend out when they're all embarrassed because they've run out of fuel. Because, you know, they didn't watch my last episode where I told people how to not run out of fuel on a journey. Okay, stored modules. This one's easy. In here, you will see any modules you've chosen to store at any station. This is useful for any engineered modules you have. Rather than sell them, keep it and use it elsewhere. You can also recall modules to your current station from this menu as well. However, while we're on the subject of selling modules, Never sell your ship with modules attached. When you sell a ship, you lose 10% of its value, and that includes modules. But if you come here to the outfitting menu and sell the modules first, you lose nothing. You get all the money from the modules back, then you sell your ship, lose 10%, job done. Okay, so let's piece all this together then. So I've just bought a new Sidewinder. I'm gonna to go to hard points first, click there, click the one I want to change, and then you'll see Browse Shop, Sell, Transfer Options. I'm going to go to Browse Shop. I'm going to come and choose a multi-cannon. And then you can see on the right-hand side, you will see Power Draw, Damage Per Second, Distributor Draw, Armor Piercing, Maximum Range, Shot Speed, Rate of Fire, and Ammo Clip Size. These are obviously the stats that you want to pay attention to. However, we're going to choose multi-cannon. We're just going to put in a gimbaled multi-cannon. So, buying options, and then here you can either choose to exchange or store your current one. We're just going to exchange, which will give me money off the one I'm buying now, by exchanging the one that we obviously had on the ship already. So, we'll wait for that to actually get put away, 
They don't want to come out, and then we're good to go. So now we have one pulse laser gimbaled and one multi cannon gimbaled. So that's shields and hull taken care of. Then we go to utility mounts. Now remember, I said that you want to use a kill warrant scanner for when you're doing combat. So again, we'd go to browse shop, come along to kill warrant scanner, and we're just going to put in a, a C for this one. Um, buying options, there's nothing to exchange, so it's just going to be buy. That's put in a kill warrant scanner now. If we wanted to put on a point defense, we could go into browse shop and they don't... Oh, there's a point defense here. Select like the point defense turret, buy an options, and then buy. Now we have a point defense at the underside of our ship as well. Then we go to core internals. This is the part that you obviously you're going to be in here most. So core internal, again, we leave power plant and thrusters to last. We want the FSD first, so browse shop. We're going to go straight to an A rated one, which you can see on the right hand side will increase our power draw. The boot time will always be the same unless you engineer to have a faster boot time. Our optimized mass, thermal load and fuel jump stats are in there as well. Pay attention to the bottom, you will see deployed. I'm now currently over my maximum megawatt allowance. When I select this, however, I'm going to put it in anyway because obviously we're going to change our power plant. I'm going to exchange the current one I've got because remember E equals dog shite, get rid of it. So exchange. Life support, as I said, just derate it, never bother with anything else. Exchange. Power distributor, we're going to get the size that we can, which says they've got an A rate one here, that's great. So we're going to A rate that. Exchange. Sensors, again, we're just going to D rate that. Buying options, exchange, fuel tank we're going to leave as is. Okay, so any optional internals, we've got our 2E shield generator here, so we're going to go browse shop. We're going to come down to shield generators. We're going to install an A. You always want to try and go for the biggest shield you can. Again, exchange. We're not going to be carrying any cargo here, so I'm just going to go straight away and sell my cargo rack. I personally don't use Super Cruise Assist, however you can if you wish. This would go down as loaned because this is just a sidewinder, so it'll always be done as loaned. Um, advanced docking computer will leave as is, however if you want to change it you could go in here, browse, come to flight assists, and then you can go for standard docking computer, buy, exchange, which will actually give you money back for this one now. So we'll put in a standard one, that's fine. Planetary approach suite, you always want to keep this because you're never going to be able to get rid You could get rid of it, but it brings you no benefit. Um, you can't replace this slot with anything else anyway. So you'll notice now that I'm still over my megawatt max. So I'm going to go back here now. I'm going to go to core internals. We're going to increase our thrusters to aerate them, which you can see increases our speed as well. So buying options, exchange, and then now we're 3.07 megawatts over our maximum when we are deployed. So now we go to power plant, and this is why I say do it last. If we go for a anything other than A on this one, actually we're going to just cover ourselves for an A. Anything else we would actually be slightly under. Now, I could take engineer into account here and engineer things, but obviously we're not covering engineering in this video. So we're going to A-rate it, buy, exchange, done. That is the ship kitted out for everything that I'm looking to do with it, other than I'm going to sell it. But So you'll see at the bottom that my total max power watt um, has increased overall. It is now obviously more than my retracted. However, I'm still within the maximum, so I can get away with it just fine. You'll see my jump range also increased now to 17.63 light years current. My maximum is 18.21. So that is how you actually put all this together. If you want to sell things, go in and just sell them straight away from in here. So just click sell, sell, and then when you come to sell it, if there's something that's key like your FSD, it will automatically put an E-rated one back in and then you can just sell your ship uh, from the ship sell menu. So that's how you piece all this together. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helped you out. I'll be back in a few days with the next one, which is going to be on money making and how to make as much money as possible in the least amount of time consistently 
You will, if you follow the steps in it, you will be a billionaire in days, all in time for Odyssey. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I helped someone out. Until next time, stay elite and stay dangerous.